What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Holland Podcast. Yet again, I'm your host, Robert Carroll, joined by my team, Brian Carey. What's up, guys? And Jamel Owens. What's going on, everybody? And, you know, we got a wonderful show for you guys today. Um, starting off, we're going to, you know, jump straight into more of the industry topics. You know, not much news <clears throat> going on during the summer here. So we're just going to just talk about some industry topics. Starting off, we're going to bring up some, about, one, about one issue that's been going on, at least to me, um, for a while now, this, not only this generation, but the last generation as well, as, well, as it pertains to exclusives. Um, it used to be back in the day, you know, everything was exclusive. You really had to pick and choose your consoles. But now everything's timed exclusive. Outside of Nintendo, everything's kind of a free-for-all or is a timed exclusive. But um, our resident DLC expert, Jamel Lowens, what you got to say about all that? Well, personally, in regards to exclusives and exclusive content, I think that's kind of where, or as you said, back in the day, you know, you had your you had your Nintendo, you had your Sega Genesis or whatever, and whatever system you were going to pick determined what games you were going to play. There weren't a whole lot of cross plats aside from some of the fighting games, but I think that's kind of where it stems the whole console war crap, which I think is stupid, but... Because you're losing. <laughs> I'm not losing. Like I said, I got I, I got both systems, so I can play. So it don't matter to me. Um, but but I can't. I'm always winning. I get to play. I get to pick and choose. Anyway, that's the point. So in my mind, exclusives don't really bother me. Mm. So if you if you if you have the systems, and exclusives don't really bother me. I can see where it could become a problem because there are some people who aren't able to buy all the systems out there. There are some people who can't do it or whatever, and so. It kind of it develops some tension because you're like, hey, I would love to play this game, but it's just never going to come to my system. I think time exclusives are better. I'm, uh, well, personally, okay, let's look at it this way. Let me backtrack. Prior to getting into this podcast, we we spoke about Square Enix and uh, you know we talked about the Final Fantasies and the Kingdom Hearts. And to be honest, even though like I said, I I don't really care which system it's on. Personally, I associate those types of games with Sony. Right. Uh, the reason why I have both systems is because. I like to play certain types of games on the, the different systems. Um, so while it's good for gamers in general, I guess, to have the ability to play some of these games like Final Fantasy and the Kingdom Hearts on both consoles, for me personally, I would have probably been happier if it, if it stayed exclusive. Just could. Just, just because of the, the, the history behind it. Um, I can't say that it's good or bad. Um, okay, yes. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, pretty much it is what it is. What you think, bro? No, man. Exclusives are necessary, all right? This is America, all right? This is a democracy. I demand competition between these companies and going at it. There needs to be competition. There has to be. You know, I... There, I mean, there has to be... I mean, I, I just kind of said there has to be competition. Um, You can't... There's no point in having multiple consoles where everything's available on the same console. You know, first and foremost, bro, I tell Nintendo to even catch up before we even talk about everything going exclusive, you know what I'm saying? Until the tender to catch up, it's not going to happen. And Sony and Microsoft, those two are going at it neck and neck, well, you know, in spirit, not, you know, on paper. But it's going to be a full day in hell before you ever see them be like, yeah, you know, we'll let you guys play Halo on PS4 uh, if we can get Uncharted on the next Xbox or something like that. That's it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And exclusives are great and necessary. I mean, I love them. I love them. I love being able to roll up to somebody on Xbox and be like, dude, I just played Uncharted 4. You know, what are you doing? How's that 8th generation Call of Duty going for you? You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, that's just me. I'm a little biased. I do love the console war. I do. You know, I'm not... I don't know, I'm not an antagonistic person, but I do love having some fun on the internet. And, <laughs> and the console war is a great place to make that happen. But hey, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. No, exclusives are necessary. They need to keep going. As for time exclusives, um, I consider them a necessary evil. Because, you know, I mean, eventually we are going to move to a place where most games are available on, you know, whichever two consoles are going at it, they're vying for the top two spots. You know, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. It, it's necessary. So, you know, like Tomb Raider coming on Xbox, before it comes on the PlayStation, it, it hurts me. It hurts me really deep because I really want to play. I really want to play Tomb Raider. But, you know, I know I'll get my shot eventually. It is what it is. It's, it's a necessary evil. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with both of, both of those points. I, you know, like, 
you know, they, where there was a big, you know, com- the console war was started because of these exclusives um, and good competition. I would think hope breed new games. Um, again, Tell that to Microsoft, bro. Get the IP game up. Get the IP up, man. Look, you keep calling me like I'm the Microsoft fanboy. First of all, okay, you are. okay, okay, you two. This we finna hash this out right now. <laughs> Why, what makes me the Microsoft fanboy? What have I pressed so hard on Microsoft that makes me that? Aside from playing, refusing to play Guitar Hero or anything other than Xbox. I mean, there you have it right there. I mean, the guitar is the same as the console, but you refuse to play it on PlayStation. The guitar is the same. We never ask you to play with a stick. We always have the guitar. <laughs> well, you refused to play. <laughs> it, was it was something about it, man. It was something about it. It was something about it. It just wasn't right. It's strum right, man. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, like as far as like, like Rob and Brian said, competition is what breeds success. Com- uh, competition and anything is what gives the consumers ultimately the best product. Um, so as far as the time exclusive, like like for me personally, I'm kind of withdrawn from the whole. I'm kind of withdrawn from it because I don't really have to worry about it um, anymore. But if it, let's say, so let's say I only had one, of, I, I can only pick one system. Right. At that point, you're torn between, okay, am I going to pick a system where the majority of my friends will play, but I might not be able to play all the games, that I, all the types of games that I like to play? Or do I particularly go to something that I can play a wide variety of games, but for the most part, pretty solo dolo. Right. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I guess it kind of depends on, the, on that. You know, pretty much you play the games where your, you know, your crew or whoever you hang out with play the game. But I think that does, it's not as it's, it's still significant, but not as significant because you can play solo at least to more fun. You know, just well, you know, more, you have more fun playing solo because you have online. You know, that back in the day, back you know, sixty four, and I guess, and PS two to a to a smaller PS2, extent. Really? Yeah, you couldn't really like you know play with other people outside of your friends and neighborhood, and y'all more had had to either had to have the same console to really you know play. Otherwise, you're getting you know blasted all over across the field or whatever game you're playing. But hmm. but yeah, exclusives are necessary, especially Nintendo's case, because those guys wouldn't be afloat if they didn't have Mario and like. Um, any other platform, even like a phone, um, but <laughs> but time exclusives, like time exclusives, I think, are completely and utterly pointless. If there's a, I mean, it's only I only see like a it'd be a big thing to people who buy games like literally day one. <laughs> but you know, it probably if you listen to this podcast or if you like you know read about games on a general basis, you know, the time is a time exclusive is gonna come to your console. And if that's the case, why why push the weight? Like, who is really going to say, you know what? Because Tomb Raider or this map pack is going to come out <laughs> a couple of months before you know beforehand, I'm going to buy a whole new console. Like, if you got money like that, then well, hold on, Rob. If we're talking about a Call of Duty map pack, there's somebody on this very channel who probably you know <laughs> I don't buy just ahead of time. I don't, I don't buy map packs. But anyway, um, back to your point, Rob. Um, so, <laughs> now, the time exclusives, I think, it really depends on the length of time it's going to be exclusive. Like, the whole Destiny thing, the Hot Moon and some of these maps, like weapons and maps, right. that was exclusive for a whole year. That's why I, I already knew I was going to purchase the Destiny on PS4. For a whole year, I wouldn't be able to get the access to this certain stuff. Right. And so it's like that. Now, things like Tomb Raider or if it's just. A... OK, so Game Hall aside, let's say we weren't doing Game Hall. Game Hall aside, if it comes from just a consumer standpoint, mm-hmm. I don't really care about a time exclusive. It's going to come to as you say, it's going to come to my system eventually. I'm going to get to play it. I agree. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I see a little time. A year is a long time. I didn't know it was that damn long. Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. That, They're just about time. to get it. They're just about to get it. See, or see uh, that one. I guess if a time exclusive is that long, it kind of makes more sense, at least from a competition standpoint. Because at that point, you know, how many games come out in a year? You know what I mean? Like, I at least get three, four games a year that I know I have to have. Like, by the time it comes out, I'll probably be there's probably some other hot stuff I want to play at the moment. So, if it was pushed back that far, then I guess it w- it wouldn't make sense to implement it. But any, like any like three months or 
something like that. I'm like, it's, it's, it's really just no point. But hey, I guess that's how the industry does nowadays. They just they just want to. These assholes, I don't know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you guys something really quick. Let me ask you both something really quick. All right. All right. Nintendo says that the gamers don't understand the Wii U, which is why it's so poorly. All right. Let me ask you guys something real quick. Why did the Wii U suck? Like seriously, <laughs> what, what was I, you just lay it all out for me? What yeah, went wrong with the Wii U? Can I start here? Please. Yes, go ahead. Resident Nintendo, go ahead. All right. <laughs> all right why did okay? From the top, we'll start with the name. All right. <laughs> well, like when they when they were trying to market <laughs> and let me say I'll say the word market very lightly. When they said we you to like, you know, is we you know, for you it's supposed to be more about you, you know, your personal fun and it was, I don't know what whatever they were doing, it was just all bad. From oh, day man. one. Like it's really just a we with a tablet. And to this day, that tablet is fairly useless. Like most games, whether Donkey Kong or Smash Brothers or any of the titles that actually actually sold on the Wii U, none of those use a tablet. And most people, let's, and let's say, what, let's call it what it is. Nintendo is mainly a casual console here. So, you know, if you bought so a Wii we for We do that kid, when they made that, when they made Brawl. That's what I'm saying. So, oh, so if fine. you bought a Wii, why in the world would you buy a Wii U? Are you getting DVD capability? Are you getting better <laughs> online? Are you getting Blu-ray? Are you getting some type of online service, a PSN, a Xbox Live? Oh, we, well, you know, we still got Netflix and, you know, stuff like that. But they don't. it was really no particular difference. They really were just selling the tablet. And, and the tablet didn't move any, it didn't do anything. I would say at this point, the only thing the Wii U really got going for it are those damn Amiibos. Cause those, you know, they sell like hotcakes. I'll give them yes, that. They do. The yes, collect- they do. I can the collector. Yes, they do. So, I mean, it was just bad marketing. You, they pretty much made so much money on the Wii. They just thought we can just literally take a squat and whatever comes out will sell good. And so, that's why they messed up. It was just day one stuff like that. Y'all got it. <laughs> oh, please, go ahead. Well... <clears throat> Because I'm a, I'm gonna start because I already know Brian gonna finish it and he 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 don't like to pull a punch he gonna be ruthless so in my opinion the Wii U didn't do the bottom line is the games right it didn't have any games I mean yes it has your it has your standard Nintendo pack it has your <laughs> Mario your Mario Party and all that but as we said before um, as someone who doesn't really have access. To uh, as like when we were in college, we had everybody right there. Mm-hmm. And someone, Nintendo is not like a, a bachelor system. Nope, it's yeah. not your bachelor system because those games are not. I don't want to play Brawl. I'm not gonna have the same enjoyment that I get playing Melee or some of these or Mario Kart online with you as I would by sitting in the same room with you. It's just not the same. And right. so, for them to be lacking in the game category. For the PS4 and Xbox One to come out and have markedly greater graphics than what your your Wii U did, which is only a minimal increase over what the Wii itself did, which is only a minimal increase over what the GameCube did, right. <laughs> you're not really you're not helping to draw me in. You have some good concepts, the whole tab. That, that's a that's a nice concept. That's a good marketing idea, but you didn't utilize it really. You for Zelda, you know, you could you can do the whole map thing. The problem is, I'm not going to be one to constantly looking down and looking back up at the screen. Right. While it's a good idea, I don't think it's really feasible. And I so I, I think that's kind of where they are. They're so hung up on that little feature there within their controller and sticking so much with their with the, the, the Nintendo franchise. And not even and not even expanding on the Nintendo. You have so many other games that you don't even explore anymore. Yep, we're just now getting the Star Fox. I was just about to say, dude, we got one to get Star Fox. I mean, come on. What was the last? I mean, what uh, Star Fox sixty four? That was the last one, right? Or did they come up on GameCube? They had some. They had two on GameCube. But they had like they had like a what was it called? I can't remember. It was Star Fox Adventures and Star Fox Assault. But think, the issue people had a lot of yeah. issue with both of those just because it, you know. It wasn't quote unquote a Star Fox game because you know you're on the ground, you're running around, um, you know, like most 
loyalist to systems, you know, they just if it's not exactly like they remember from a decade ago, they just oh, yeah. you know, they just rage. If it's not complete if it's not completely canon, they don't want it. Yeah, but I mean much. like back back in the day when Nintendo sixty four was out, Nintendo sixty four was for a good time like the hottest console out for a minute. Mm. In my opinion, for me. I mean, they had all kinds of stuff. They had your, they had quarterback club. Right. They had uh what was it? Um uh what was the Star Wars game called? Shadow of the Republic? Yeah, the Shadow Republic, that's one. They had they had all they had all kinds of different games. They did. And I don't know what caused them to go away from that at a point where you see the other two companies, they're taking off and leaving the dust, so why would you retreat further inward? I don't get it. Part don't of taking the, your ball and going home, bro. Yeah. I mean, they like like we were saying off off before the podcast here, they don't mind taking their own path, and which I, I think in, in a way that kind of makes them kind of really arrogant because they're like, you're going to. I mean, and it, 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 it's been hit and miss. Like, I, I I kind of understand why they're on their own path sometimes because when they make a success, you know, it's pretty big, like the Wii, or even back as far as the GameCube. I remember like when the Wind Waker um, was first announced, people were tripping over the cell shaded graphics. And to you know, and it, but it came out so big to this day. They're still making stuff, you know, with Wind Waker light art for like the 3DS and whatnot. But you know, they got a long way to go. Um, I've just been really disappointed with the the whole Wii U. And like you said, Jamel, um, they had a lot of they had, they had no games in the beginning. Like even to this day, we have not seen a, they have a Zelda coming out, but they already have another console announced. There has been no Zelda. There has been no um, no Samus games. Of course, you got your Mario, but I mean, if 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 they didn't have a Mario game, they'd probably bankrupt right now. So that's not really saying much. Right. I mean, <laughs> and it's and it's funny you bring out like the Zelda because I was gonna wait. I was I was thinking about getting a Wii U. Mm-hmm. I remember waiting that. for waiting for a, the Zelda game. Right. And then the, and they they came out with the Zelda. It looks pretty cool. Um, slightly upgraded cell shaded graphics. And then shortly after that, the NX. I'm like, I'm not gonna. Granted, it's a, it's a low price, yes, but I'm not gonna spend. The money on the Wii U just for the NX to come out, which I would assume and hope that is going to at least, if you're still going to be taking the same games, at least give me the updated graphics. You know? Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. At least, at least give me the specs and some Blu ray. Look, at least, just look, just give me specs and Blu ray and I, I'll stop tripping. <laughs> like, Robbie, I was talking about that earlier today. Like, we were talking about that thing's probably not even as powerful as the 360, which came out 10 years ago. You know? Yeah, it's probably not even gonna be as powerful as that. And even a 360 can't play Blu-ray. So, you know, just saying. Sorry, buddy. Just saying. HD but, DVD RIP. So yeah, well, well, expand on that a little bit, Brian. What do you think the NX is like? Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but um, there's a rumor going out that the NX is supposed to drop next year, or at least it's supposed to be in production, possibly now to get ready for next year, um, or at least in that time frame. Um, but Nintendo has both confirmed that they they won't talk about it till next year, so that you know that kind of kind of gives us a hint. But it also points they also say that they're going to keep supporting the Wii U, even while the NX is out and the 3DS. Um, so Brian, I know you probably wouldn't buy it one way or the other, but <laughs> if if you were to buy the NX, what would it need to include for you to even think about purchasing it? Uh, proper online functionality and a Blu-ray player. An internal hard drive. That's it. I'm not a. I'm. I'm pretty easy to please. Pretty right. easy to please. I really like to play online that much, you know. But you know, I can't deny that it's the phenomenon that it is. And so you got to be able to play online, eh? Um, it's 2015, man. You need a Blu-ray player, you know. I mean, get in or get out. We're joking about VHS, but really, people are probably joking about DVD by now. That's how old <laughs> we are, you know. So. You need a functional Blu-ray player. I don't think that's unreasonable to ask. Um, and it, even if you can't get an internal hard drive, at least give me a USB port. Give me a USB port. Um, give me a proper USB port to, you know, read my drive or everything like that. I don't need everything from it, but be a proper media center. I mean, like, at this point, I know we always try to fight against these things and these, these trends come with the process, but you got to be a proper media center for you to be actually viable in this day and age, you know? I mean, the PS3 just kind of came in and just kind of blew everything away. After the Xbox 360, now they're doing even more, as it is right now. And Nintendo is still stuck in, like, 2003 or something. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that'd be it. To answer your question, 
those two or three things. That's it. All right. I know you said you pretty much need a Blu-ray as well, Jamel. Anything else you want to add on top of that? Like, what the index needs to have? Well, Brian pretty much said it. First and foremost, it needs to meet the competition. Right. If you're gonna be in the if you're gonna be in the <laughs> game of console race, well, if you want to consider yourself a worthy opponent or just even in this realm, at least have the basis of what everybody else has. Right. You're not even gonna be like as of now, like we're talking about them because they're not being talked about. And I really don't think that's the rap <laughs> I really don't think that's the rap <laughs> that you want. That's not the way I mean, yes. <laughs> Attention, all attention is whatever, but n- no, that's not the attention that I would want. But um, so pretty much, like you said, internet, Blu-ray, updated specs. You want to do whatever, whatever gimmicks you want. Like, and, and that's what I've always, I, I love that about Nintendo is because they do do things like that to push the envelope or to try, they, they try new things. But you got to remember what it is your, your goal is in the first place. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'll say for me, what okay, number one thing I gotta have, I need a proper controller. I don't want no re- I don't want no remote. I don't want no tablet. I don't want no no right. refit um, weighing machine. I don't need all these accessories. I don't even want no amiibos. I don't want controller. I don't want sticks and four buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want the I want the base. I mean, I don't need all this extra stuff. Cause they kept it. up, down, left, right, X, Y, A, B. Thank you. I mean, just give me that. Cause this, this is the weird thing. Like, since the GameCube, due to just just by Smash alone, they have to keep reproducing the GameCube controller because nobody's going to play with the Wiimote or a damn tablet. You need a proper controller. You need a proper like, controller. As much as I hear that the new Smash is pretty awesome. I'm not, look, that's no, like, hey man, y'all I'm see like, my so drawing weird. tablet, right? That's like me trying to play a game on this, exactly. this right here. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's just not intuitive. Like, they keep trying to say you can do all these things with the tablet and with the remote or all these extra accessories. We just, I just don't need that. I just need a basic control. And what you said, Brian, about the media center, that's what they should do. I highly doubt it. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they are purely a games console. So just like y'all were saying, we just need we need games at like at launch, like we need like several good games. First party, I need my Zelda. I need some Samus. I need some Captain Falcon. I need some I need some good stuff from the jump. Um, the only thing I would say I I'm kind of I'll say maybe I would say maybe backward compatibility, and I only say that because let's just say the index comes out next year. Anybody who bought a Wii U, and if you did, I'm sorry for you, but if you bought a Wii U, I'm sure if the, if the index came out next year, because let's, let's, you know, companies lie all the time. I'm not 100%. I, I saw this E3. 90% of the games for the, were for the DS. I mean, we had, we had um, you know, Star Fox and a couple other games, but for the most part, it's all DS. I ain't feeling too strongly about the fact you're going to keep supporting the Wii U after launch. And anybody who bought Wii U games, I think it'd be in Nintendo's best interest to kind of give it away saying we haven't forgotten about you. If you bought a Wii U game, you could still, you know, continue to play on the next version as opposed to saying, well, that's not going to work. You need to buy a whole new console and rebuy the game in order to play. I think that's probably the best way going forward. And if they don't want to, you know, piss whatever fan base they got left. No, Rob, that's, that's very reasonable. Considering the moves that Microsoft is making with compatibility to the Xbox One and PlayStation, between the NX, the Wii U, and the Wii, I don't think backup compatibility is too much to ask for. If Microsoft can make this move, then it's not unreasonable at all to ask Nintendo to do so. Very you know, true. I mean, Very you're true. talking about a significant hardware jump between the Xbox One and 360. <laughs> between the Wii and the Wii U, like you guys already said, it, the difference is a tablet. It's, it's, all right. Guys, what does the Xbox, like Rob and I, you and I had this discussion like for a quick second earlier today, where um, what was it, 60% of the European market? Of 60% of European gamers own a PlayStation as opposed yep. to an Xbox or a Nintendo console. Correct. So I just want to ask you guys real quick, what does the Xbox need to do to catch, to catch up to Sony this generation? If, if it's even possible. Well, I'll, I'll go to you start. first, yeah. Um, personally, it's all about the type of games you market the most on your console and the target audience. The target audience for the Xbox, which is what I mainly play, are going to be people who are playing more... Yeah, he did not. Well, it, it's, well it, it's kind of changing now, but it's really 
for arcade type games, sh- your shooters, driving games, or something like that. It really wasn't anything because, like in Japan, they don't care nothing about that. So there, there's never going to be anything they could do over there in Japan. That's for one thing. Mm-hmm. There's not. This is get that clear. There's not. There's never going to be anything they can do to catch up in Japan and Europe. Pretty much the same thing, and it's kind of just a different mentality of the inhabitants of these different areas as, a par- as compared to America. America, we like instant gratification, and what's better than being able to hop on Call of Duty and be able to get in, what, about 10 matches and maybe 45 minutes to go about the rest of your day. There's nothing, it, the, the Xbox really wasn't until now, for me at least, it wasn't really about anything to really sit down and invest a lot of time, and that's not why I got it initially. So I think it's really, you have to change, they have to change, and I think that's what they're working on, like the, the, uh, getting the tumor exclusivity and all that. I think they're trying to change some of that image and say, hey, we can we can provide those games that are going to want to make you sit down and think that you just sit down and devote hours to to play. I think that's what, that's what it's going to take, because that's what most people everywhere other than America is looking to do when they play a game, lose themselves in the game itself. I agree. Um, I, yeah, probably the biggest thing is just expanding. Like, like you man was just saying, like most games that Xbox market and promote, there's things Americans Americans like, you know, shooting guns, fast cars, you know, violence to an extent. I mean, people might disagree or whatnot, you know, wherever you you, you know PC nerds out there, whatever. But um, that's what, I mean. That's, that's, not you, just, no, no, no. I'm just saying in general. You know, um, <laughs> I'm just saying in general, like, um, by politically correct, I meant that PC. Like, you know, Americans like violence, and they like cars, and they like, you know, um, just all types of stuff. I mean, they like they, they, a lot of Americans that like a lot of different things, mostly action ex- like explosions. They tan, like Michael Bay type shit. Like being tan. That's all I'm gonna say. They just want explosions, man. Yeah, they, they that's the what they want. Horses. And I think other markets like Europe, like Japan, like different things. And that's one thing I can always give Sony, like, and kind of what they did with the PS4. They kind of opened it up with some of their um, indie games, stuff like Journey and things like that on the PS3. They just have a wide variety. There's something for everybody to play on the PS4, PS3, and they all get about the same or decent marketing. Things on Xbox, you can tell, is, is for the Americans, and that's pretty much it. Um, they just don't, I don't think they just, don't, I think like Brian, you said this earlier, they're not, they're not imagining far enough in the other, in the other, in the other um, countries, not in Europe and definitely like Japan. And I do agree with Jamel. There's no way Japan, you're just going to lose out. You know, I don't know what they got to do. They just, they just not, they're just not smooth enough. I mean, there's always the big bulky system out <laughs> east. You know, it's just, you know, they try to put the little black sleek coat on it but it's just not enough you need this game that appeals to different people and that's where Sony just has them beat they just have the wide variety um, that they can use and I know at the beginning we are talking about exclusives and how most games for the most part does come on both consoles I'm sure y'all both aware you know we watch you know anime and all types of stuff all the time there are plenty of games that come out in Japan and probably other places especially Japan that we never get you know just simply because they don't think we like that because they think you know we like you know, a small market, you know, range of things. So, and that's kind of, it's kind of like, man. we're just getting Steins Gate. Exactly. Saying. Stuff like that. Um, whether Steins Gate or, yeah, a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of games in general. It's like, when the games are like 10 years old before we get it here. And I think Japan to some extent doesn't have, um, doesn't have, I guess, a good feel for what um, Americans really want. Because there are a lot of games in Japan. I wish they would just translate and bring over here. But hey, that's just a whole nother thing. But all in all, um, Xbox needs to just expand their market, expand their types of gameplay, new IPs, not the same old, same old. I know it's a safe choice, but you need just better choices up and down. And I will say, I don't want this to sound like, you know, it's just the bad session there, because there are things they're doing well, like the Kinect. One of the main reasons why I bought the Xbox One is because I wanted that Kinect 2.0, and it, it that's a really good camera. It is, it's clear. It does its job very well. But the most innovative thing Xbox has done was Project Spark. And that has already fallen by the wayside. In my opinion, that's the most innovative thing. And, like, if you compare Project Spark to Dreams, mm-hmm. I think <laughs> the range of freedom that's going to be coming in Dreams is going to far surpass what Project Spark did. 
it probably it, that, that's one thing about, I, I agree with that because like I know when the Xbox One was first announced, the Kinect seemed like it had a lot of features, and I'm sure many of you listen to the podcast have heard of maybe the Oculus Rift or Sony's Morpheus. The Kinect has a lot of powerful capability to do a lot of different things, much like Nintendo. I don't think I don't know if either somebody's not using it properly or just not promoting it properly. Like outside the media center, like you know, cut on Blu-ray or cut on this or change channel. Like, you know, other than, you know, commands like that, I just, you know, I know it can do more, but I haven't seen it translate into gameplay. And I said Dreams, and what was the other one you mentioned? Uh, the Project Spark. And Project Spark. Those are two, those are probably, you know, two good ones, but I don't know. I, I guess I just need to see more from, like, other other people. Like, you have a connect, and it can do a lot. I'm, at least I'm, I'm assuming it can. It looks like it from the beginning. Well, I mean, you remember when we first did the whole, uh, for the, the E3 presentation when it was coming out, we learned about the Connect, right. and it was it, it's strong enough to be able to tell your your pulse, right, and things like that. Heartbeat scanner built in. You ain't got to be all up on it. Don't got to touch. It. Yeah. So what I'm hoping for, and it may not happen on this particular generation if consoles don't phase out, is in this move with the VR maybe. Mm. Maybe somehow that could be integrated. Maybe your motion somehow could be. I know you probably have a, have to have a lot of room, but maybe somehow they could just translate the use of that into more than just the media uses. Now there is one thing with that. I, I definitely, yeah, you're right. It, it could do a lot more. But now I think about. It, I remember when all that stuff was announced. A lot of people were very nervous because it, it had pretty much it had some of its capabilities, like it had the camera, the motion sensor. Like people were afraid Microsoft would look it up in your house or something. The like NSA that. box, that's what yeah, they call pretty it. Pretty much. <laughs> like I, I remember the article saying it got banned in China because like they were nervous about censorship and all that. And so on that end, I think maybe in this particular case, I I'll, I'll say that Microsoft maybe thought a little too far ahead. Like you know, they they put a little more technology in it than I think the rest of the game and culture is, is ready for, especially right now. Because, you know, we're not ready for always connected online. We're not all, you know, we're not ready for, you know, non-disc or non-physical gaming. I think they were just, they thought a little bit too far ahead. They tried to out, they tried to out Sony Sony, and they just kind of, kind of got bit by it. Well, they, yeah, you're definitely right. They out kind of, they outpace the times in which we're, we're comfortable with. They right. far surpass that, that comfort level of, Yes, we as much as we love that 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 um, convenience. Yeah. That's that is crazy. As much as we love convenience, that was too far. Like, bro, you ain't gotta do nothing. Just keep online. We'll update your stuff already for you. You want convenience, but not with the sacrifice of privacy. And a, and a, the reason for that, that why that's scary. That's definitely for another topic, <laughs> not for a gaming topic. But yeah, I feel it, Brian. Oh, you guys kind of killed it, hot, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm good to go. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Quite frankly, all Microsoft really needs to do is expand the creativity, take some more risks, bring some more brand new IPs in. You know, it's that simple. As long as Sony, Sony's probably sitting there just laughing back. But as long as we got Call of Duty on, you know, off that exclusive. As long as we're getting Call of Duty, we can keep messing around, keep giving these indie dudes all the mess they want to do. Let the squirting guys do what they want to do, and they just have everything coming from like different kind of pools. And Microsoft just means the pool seems kind of shallow in terms of the ideas they're putting out, the type of games they want to put out, and like the crowd they're appealing to. Like you guys said, they appeal to a like you know in a very exclusive American type of demographic, and they're never going to catch up in Japan. And I don't see that happening overseas either, quite frankly. But they just need to expand their IPs, take some more chances. It's that simple. Absolutely. Exactly. That, that's the that, bottom line. You're right. Because, and you see, they're kind of starting to do it by some of these. Uh, you see how they showed a little bit more indie games than PlayStation did this time around. Granted, PlayStation kind of had was ready for that because they just led with what people have been waiting for in the first place. Right. Finally. Thank you, Sony. I appreciate it, by the way. But <laughs> the thing is, by supporting these indie gamers, all you're doing is you're creating more opportunity for you to have those. Innovative IPs. Once you start, yeah. then they're going to get more confidence. Okay, let's 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 continue to work. So that's why I think I, indie games are critical. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, you, know, it, you know, companies always complain today how expensive games are to make. If you will give, you know, if you hit, like like Sony did or like Steam does, if you give indies a platform 
where they can at least try to make their own thing. It just expands your base. I know my, I, Xbox did have like a little marketplace, but they really kind of shut that down at, the end, at near the end of the 360, I believe. So they need to kind of, like, like you said, Jamel, just bring that type of thing back up. That way you can continue to have a wide variety of games. And you don't necessarily have to work on it yourself. You can let the public get involved. Everybody make a little money. Everybody's happy. But, hey, but like I said, we'll see in the coming months. But um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining on the podcast with us. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we're keeping up with everything. We, it, was, it was a slow news week, but we appreciate you joining on with us yet again. Um, um, you can catch us again at GameHow.com. We also have a Twitch stream hosted by our man Jamel, um, so you can catch him on there on, on most weeknights um, playing either Witcher Three, Destiny, or other games. Um, but always join the website, make some videos, and you know. And get, and get involved. There's plenty of stuff to do. Um, plenty of ways to get involved. So come check us out. Engage I'm your host, with us, Robert friend. Carroll. Engage with us, yes. And uh, indeed. And again, I'm your host, Robert Carroll. And I'm Brian Carey. And it's my. I'm Jamel. It's been a pleasure, guys. Like I said, check us out. Check the website out. Check the stream out. Check the YouTube out. And if you check it out, leave a like. Leave a comment. If you don't like it, leave a comment. Let us know why. Every little bit helps. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave leave a comment. <laughs> Like I said, I, I see the stats. I see you out there. Leave a comment. We won't bite. <laughs> we won't bite. Come on, we, man. I'm just saying, we, we won't bite unless you ask. <laughs> okay. This is All right, PC peace 13. out, everybody. Yeah. We're not out here for these little scrubs. Hey, we stopped recording, right? <laughs>